Why, yes, I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> I like the opening for this show. I mean, I didn't think anybody could outdo my opening for my show. And Shane did this opening. You know, War Games is still one of my favorite movies. I love that movie. (laughs) I really like that. Shall we play? I like that. The only way to win is not to play. That's exactly right. (laughs) It's that Jack Nicholson intro that I love. Yeah. (laughs) Thermonuclear war. (laughs) Yes. Kind of like that. Mitch Barkweiser is here. Tim Lim is here. I'm going to let you guys introduce your two uh, guests that are with you and uh, tell us a little bit. I know one of them is a horror movie fan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You guys have been telling me about him for the last several times you've been on my show. <laughs> By this is Shane Plays Radio. I'm Dave Ellswick. I'm sitting in for him. Uh, Shane had some personal business he had to take care of uh, today, so uh, I decided to bring in the heavy hitters to fill in, and it's good to have these two guys here in the studio with us. they got some Im- you know, exciting news to tell you about. But why don't I start off with you, Tim? Who's this guy to your left? So for listeners who are familiar with either the Dave Ellswick show or for or with Shane Plays, this is Mark Pellegrini. He was my co-writer on Thump, the first Bundred Days. So I came up with the character and the idea, and he's the guy who wrote the book. And then cool. he, he also <laughs> is the co-writer of My Hero Magademia and Black Ops. And the connection that he has between Mitch and I is he is Mitch's helper and co-writer, scripter on Red Rooster. Okay, so yes. now my big question for him is, are you going to capture your inter Monty Python and have a killer rabbit <laughs> you know, somewhere we, along the line in a that horror motif? So much. Uh, the second we announced Black Ops, oh man, it was just nothing but uh, the, the killer rabbit from Monty Python gifts on, on Twitter. Um, this the, the rabbit in Black Ops is going to be pretty brutal, though. But uh, he's, he's fighting the good fight, though, so yeah, it's well, all good. That, yeah. <laughs> All right. No Jimmy Carter jokes in it? Uh, no Jimmy Carter jokes. Okay. It was a little bit before my time, but, okay. you know. No, but he does. Watch it. Ageism here. No. 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 <laughs> he does take on Kim Jong-un, though, for people interested. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's good. Did you see Ramirez's political cartoon, The Day of the Summit? No, I didn't. And it had the picture of Un and Trump looking at each other. First thoughts, and they both were thinking, what a strange haircut. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was great. Yeah, well, there's yeah. some common ground. I like uh, I like Ramirez. He's a great uh, political Did, did you see the, uh, the the clip uh, of Trump where he's engaged with the media there at the, at the table, and I can't remember where, during their, their conference or whatever, and it was right before they were sitting down, and he asked the media to, uh, you know, take some photos and make sure it's a good angle, make, it, make sure we look real nice and slim. <laughs> and then they pan over to Kim Jong Un, and he's like looking around, like he doesn't know what they're saying. And, and it's like a somebody said it was like a moment out of the office, and it really was. It was awkward and hilarious. Uh, you, yeah, you can dig that clip up. See, it's that's a, getting that's that's Trump getting yeah, him off balance. He's funny, he's just funny. <laughs> just yeah. taking taking you, care of business. Humor can win the day. I mean, humor is a lot better than. Uh, War, that's for sure. <laughs> Sometimes. <Right? laughs> Sometimes war is what you have to do. Well, I guess if you can uh, avoid it with a, a few laughs, then that's, that's better. Uh, that's, that's better. I agree. I'm all, it's just like everybody asked me, what do you think about the Korean summit? And I said, well, you know, drawing back on my, my 60s roots, let's give peace a chance. Yeah. I have well, no problem with that. I think, I think a lot of what we're seeing right now is uh, – I mean, there's kind of extremism on both sides. The left's not totally wrong when they say that there's a there's some extremists on the right, and there's definitely some on their really? on their side of things. <laughs> like maybe more than some. Like this, some of these people are really unhinged. Uh, but you know what? Just making fun of them, making fun of both of them. You know, that's that's what I think. That's what kind of brings us all together. No, like right. we got to laugh at these extreme weirdos. Now you've brought somebody in with you to your right, uh, Carter Bowden. Carter Carter is a, a recent graduate of Episcopal, and he's going to be going to uh, film school. Carter's been my assistant for uh, our understudy for the last uh, year and a half, or wow. two years or so, and he's been following my career for a long time. And so I have taken Carter under my wing and shown him all the ropes. So are you going out to USC for a film school out there? No, uh, no, C- Carter. You want to answer that? Yeah, the mic's Someone right there. The Just lean over. I'm heading to Belmont University in Nashville. All right, got a good basketball team. Yeah, they do. Yep. Hey, yeah, it looks like a they great beat my school. alma mater all the time, Moorhead State. 
Yeah, so Carter's going to be a filmmaker. So he's going to be very, make very show. cool. He's going to make all my comic book uh, comic books into films. So Carter, are you? That's my secret are you, plan. Are you libertarian, <laughs> conservative? What are you? Because I'm not going to ask you if you're liberal, because I know that's probably not the case. At this point, I just try to get along with everybody. Oh, okay. There you go. I'm just wondering because we just need people in the film industry that aren't going to be out there from the left all the time. Yeah, will not be me. I'm getting tired of that. Yeah, yeah. I, am I too. did. So, oh, by the way, Tim, I did go see Lolo. Uh, solo. Lolo. Yeah. Solo. Did you like it? It was. That's <laughs> JW. Yeah. There you a go. lot of it. A lot of it. Are you? Do you strangely attracted to robots now? No. <laughs> okay. Did no, you? I'm, uh, I'm not. Have you seen The Incredibles too? Oh my God! I went and saw it the opening night. How yes. was it? Was that that I love it. Yeah. Not really. It was. But I thought it was very well done as far as the importance of family. Okay. I mean, that's what Brad Bird's into. You know, he's into. The power of family. He says that's the way you change the world is through the family. Well, we were kind of concerned because the trailers made it look like it was um, stay-at-home dad. The mom goes out and fight, and we thought to ourselves, well, if that's going to be the theme of the movie, and they're going to try and ram it down your throat, nah, I don't know. I'll wait out on it. But everyone that I've talked to said they loved it. Oh, it was great. My favorite part of the dad staying at home is when he's trying to work with his son, Dash, and dealing with the new math. <laughs> yeah common core yeah, yeah it's really good oh they just beat common core up well we might have to it's check it out good. then maybe, you'll like it. maybe today you'll like yeah. it it's a good it's a good movie it's a funny movie okay uh is the only reason it's not as good as the original is that it's not the, the original. original yeah you know you can't capture that feel for the movie again because there's never going to be another quote original one yeah but stay for the end there's not any scenes or anything but just check out the music Okay. That's one thing I really enjoyed about the first Incredibles movie is how they integrated the feeling of the whole James Bond motif just through the music. Mm -hmm. That kind of jazz yeah, lounge music and stuff. Had, yeah. yeah. They do it again this one. Okay. But uh, at the end, they, it's just all the different music and Mr. Incredible theme and all that other stuff. And it's it's such a great parody of those that music back then. I love sitting there and just listening to it. It's not like Deadpool 2, though. <laughs> it's not that kind of music. Okay. Did you did you stay for Deadpool 2? I did, yeah. Did you hear the, that, the song in there for Cable? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right. So anyway, Mitch. Yes, sir. I read something on uh, the Internet, and uh -oh. looks like you got – You've been telling me something big is coming. Yes. You have mentioned Indiegogo before. Yes, I have. All right. So bring us up to okay, date. Okay. So uh, I have created a comic book, or I'm creating a comic book project called Red Rooster Golden Age, and you can get on my Twitter or Instagram or Facebook and, and check out all the artwork for this. I my, like the one of the chick riding of course the rocket. You, of course you do. <laughs> that, that is a straight throwback of the 1950s. Uh, yeah, well, the story takes place in like the mid-1930s, so I guess that might be a little edgy for the 1930s, but it's a fantasy world we're creating uh, regardless of, of heroes and mad uh, mad mystery men and, and villains and stuff like that. The basic pitch is it's Batman in a barn. you got a character with no uh, superpowers, basically, who's just a hero, a struggling hero, who uh, has a set of allies and a set of villains, and he's trying to keep it all under control. But of course, he uh, always he goes a bridge too far and uh, has to deal with the consequences of his own actions, uh, as well as uh, as villains being a constant thorn in his side and whatnot, uh, and in his friend's side. Uh, so we are doing an Indiegogo campaign. So if you're not familiar with Indiegogo, it's sort of a, a competitor to like Kickstarter or whatever. It's it's uh, it's the other Kickstarter. So you can go and if you want to get a, a, a sense of what it's like, we're, we're going to launch like mid to late July. Mark Pellegrini is our script guy. He's been helping me co-plot yeah. the whole thing, and he's doing a fantastic job. He just turned in the first full finished first draft of our 48. It's going to be 48 pages, maybe more. If you guys really come out and and give to this project, uh, you have these like stretch goals. So like if, if we raise a certain amount of money, we're going to add maybe 12 or 15 more pages to the book and make the book bigger maybe maybe put a gold foil cover on it and make it really collectible and special wow. for our backers and my wife elizabeth is going to be coloring the project oh cool uh, so and she's a she is a superstar in the comic book coloring world she is and uh so she's going to be uh, coloring the book and it is like i said batman in a barn i think it's something that the i'm doing this in many ways for the roots audience for 
uh, the people uh, is for everybody, you know, right? The urban people, I think, might have a curiosity about what's going on out here and uh, fly over land. Oh, oh, I, I hate, thought you I hate that Roots word. the mini series. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 very funny. Uh, but it's for the Arkansas audience. It's for uh, it's for everybody. Um, it, it's going to be a tale of classic heroism with some humor and some and some darkness, uh, with sort of Mark's horror influences creeping around the edges a little bit, and my own. Uh, experiences uh, working on Captain America stories and um, yeah I just think it's going to be a a heck of a time explain something to the listeners how hard is it to give birth to a a, and don't say it's like passing a bowling ball please (laughs) Uh, is it you know how difficult is it to create a completely new and original character like Uh, this it 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 is both very difficult and, and very rewarding for me personally because I just love the process of creation and I love working with collaborators and kicking ideas ar- ideas around and uh, the process of editing and refining a story and building it out and constructing something that's uh, a world for these characters and you know ultimately for me getting them out there and having young people read these things and having them influence their lives and what we want to do, or one of my personal goals, is to uh, is to get is to get these stories in front of kids and really make a difference in their lives. This, this is maybe not for little kids; it's for you know teen, preteens and, and young adults and that kind of stuff. So people that are looking for what they're doing at that age is you're looking for every kid wants to be a hero, policeman, fireman. They look up up to these people. They want to believe that there are heroes in the world and that they can be heroes too. Kids are aspirational. Mm-hmm. And so what we want to do for, for these young people is give them a, a heroic narrative, a hero that's not perfect, that is flawed, because we're all flawed individuals. Well, if he's not Batman a in a barn, barn or, he's yeah, got to be flawed. He makes mistakes and has to deal with the consequences. And, and that's what being a, an, a, a hero is. And it's about uh, you know embracing a set of values. And the kids, what we want to do is, is give kids something they can root for and they can look at and say, hey, this is what it means to be a hero as an adult. As they grow into adulthood, these are the kinds of things that society looks at uh, as uh, the things you're supposed to do to help people. And we want to, uh, we're doing it for the, we're doing it for them mostly. And that's going to be the ultimate reward. But All right. So it is, it's not easy. It's, it's, it's a lot of hard work that goes into this and a lot of passion. Let's talk to the guy who's uh, writing the script for you, basically. Yeah. Mark how, Pellegrini. Yeah. How, how difficult is it for you, Mark, to, to listen to what Mitch says about the characters that he's developing and for you to wrap a story around that. Well, when I first sat down with uh, Mitch and he gave me the um, the seminar on Red Rooster and all of his ideas, um, they were all fantastic, yeah, but they were all kind of like disparate, like over here, over there, over there, just yeah, jumbled up. Jumbled up, and so uh, part of um, what he needed me to help him with was to um, basically unscramble those ideas and work out a plot thread, a through line, sew them all together into a narrative. And so we worked... Uh, together on, on multiple very long plotting sessions every Saturday for months. I would come over um, just after lunch and I would stay until after dinner and we would just hammer out all the uh, all the kinks. We would get all the nuts and bolts down. We plotted out, um, it started out a six issue storyline, bloated into like a 12 issue storyline and then we came up with the idea for the, uh, the uh, Indiegogo special which is kind of like um, a prelude into what we hope to be an ongoing series. Mm-hmm. And it was it was a lot of work, but it's very rewarding work. All right, now Tim, you can jump in on this because you work with Mark as well. What's it like when you guys are working together? Evidently, he works for food, goes <laughs> up before lunch, leaves after dinner. <laughs> but I, I mean, just ex- explain how that all worked out with you. Yeah, and um, the funny thing is this: so hit Saturdays are booked between Mitch and myself. So he meets me for lunch. And then afterwards, he meets Mitch for the afternoon and for dinner. But now we've start, because we're working so closely together, we just decided to combine everything. So our Saturdays are basically just spent together, the three of us just uh, spitballing ideas back and forth. But Mark and I go way back, more than seven years. He's helped me in merchandising. So he comes up with the ideas and I draw. Cool. Um, we, we tend to see eye to eye in terms of the creative component. But our, our prior projects have all been almost like comedies, satires, and gags. So it's a little bit different just because the creative process is can you deliver the gag? Can you deliver the joke? And can we execute it? Now that we're delving into more serious territory, uh, the creative process is a little bit more back and forth. All right. So 
When you sat down, with Mark, do you have a story in mind? Yeah, that like you, like that Mark, you, you share with him. I, I mean, or I do did. You, uh, you I don't had, give him carte blanche. Yeah, so I created yeah. this Red Rooster character at the very kind of tail end of my Marvel uh, careers, probably like the, in the last year of my Marvel career. I just sort of drew. Uh, I was doing this book called Captain America Patriot, and I was on like the fourth, the last issue of it, and uh, <clears throat> I just drew it, you know, in between pages, and uh, and I for fun and it kind of became a lark and i'm like oh this kind of he looks like a rooster i'm going to call him the red rooster and he lived in my sketchbook for a number of years and i kept showing him to some close friends and they loved it uh in, in terms of the imagery that it evoked this sort of uh, cape and cows on the farm type mm-hmm. thing uh that i don't believe has ever really been done before right so it's something different it does uh, look different, and it's something that uh, I think would resonate with the uh, with with our with your audience, with you know people I grew up around and the, the kids I kind of want to inspire. It's Americana. It's Americana, and I think Americana sells. And you're not getting a whole lot of Americana. No, not through like uh, you know coastal uh, by coastal elite production companies and in Hollywood movies. You're not getting a whole lot of. You get it from time to time. Occasionally, you'll get a, a Field of Dreams type movie and. They always they don't always do well, but they generally resonate. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, why is anybody else tapping this? No superhero books. All the superhero books are urban, and they're for an urban audience. They're for the hip art school kids. And I'm not a hip art school kid, really. Uh, you know. So what, uh, one thing that we noticed so uh, early on when we got together and we started talking, um, one thing that we always liked was, as you said, the Red Rooster is different. It looks very different, mm-hmm. but yet. The colors that are evoked by him, red, white, and yellow, are very uni- are very uh, familiar. One thing that we talked about was obviously working in merchandising. I uh, I was having uh, dinner. It was Mark and Mitch and his wife and I. And I said, in merchandising, we learned that there's a couple of T-shirts that sell very well, and the one the the colors that are very unique are red, yellow. Uh, white to some degree, but red and yellow for a fact. And it's the, re- the reason why, if you look at Wendy's, Hardee's, McDonald's, KFC, fast food chains, right. there's a reason why those colors are so evocative. And we've come to kind of subconsciously equate that with larger pop culture. And so I know that with um, the Brightweiser's um, upbringing and their, their trades graph in, in knowing color theory and stuff like that, how much of that was conscious versus unconscious, they really tapped into a look that is automatically resonant with uh, their viewers and their fans. So I think that um, they definitely have something going on here uh, for sure in terms of creating something with lasting potential. Okay. Yeah. Just to share a good example of what you're talking, this whole Americana thing, a lot of people would have thought, and Mark can jump in on this too, that Pumpkinhead <laughs> would never have done anything box office. Mm-hmm. But it's got such a Americana feel to it. It did very well. Yeah, I mean, it had um. So Pumpkinhead is such a, a crazy movie. I mean, directed by Stan Winston. I think it was the first movie he ever directed, and he was a special effects guy. He did the uh, the dinosaurs on Jurassic Park, among many other things. And it had Lance Henriksen, a really small cast, a very um small use of sets. Um, it was really just um a very cheap movie but not cheap looking because it was made by such great talent Mm -hmm. and it has that that rural backwoods feel to it very much so it's almost alien even though it takes place in america and it's fantastic it's one of the classics uh stay away from the sequels but um i agree uh, the original is uh, is a real um cult classic well what's the other one the one that's done it's uh uh the monster it's a kind of a slasher film but it's done in louisiana They've done several. Is it Candyman? No, not no. Candyman. They've done several, several uh, sequels. A, a new one has just come out here recently, but this uh, this kid was mistreated by all the other kids, and they set the house on fire, and he survived, and now he goes out and he's become a slasher. The hatchet. Uh, that's it. Yeah. Hatchet. Okay. Yeah. They've, yeah. they've been pumping those. I think they're on the third one now. I knew yeah. that if I mentioned enough stuff, <laughs> we'd come up with who. It, well, yeah. Hatchet. It's done well. And again, yeah. it's got that whole backwoods feel to it. Well, that's the, the beauty of horror movies. It's kind of like a blessing and a curse form is that they're so cheap to make. It's almost impossible for them not to, to make a profit uh, because it, it costs nothing to film a horror movie. And so, of course, you get a whole lot of zero effort stuff out there that especially in the age of, you know, digital cameras and, and production costs getting very simple and open to everybody. You know, there's a glut of it. 
But anybody can really make a horror movie is how a lot of the great directors got started. Yep. Peter Jackson, Sam Raimi, guys like that. Even Steven Spielberg started with Jaws. Oh, that was like one of the first blockbuster horror movies, but still. And I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll tell you, I'm a huge horror fan, as you already have figured that out over the years. You've listened to me on, on the air, but... Uh, I like those movies a lot. Pumpkinhead is one of my favorite ones. I like that it's, movie it's a lot. It's so good. Um, I was on um, a, a, a live stream with the individual That Umbrella Guy. Um, you can find him on YouTube. Um, it's all one word, That Umbrella Guy. We had a five and a half hour horror movie live stream where we just, wow. you know, just talked about horror movies. We could have gone on if it hadn't been two in the morning when we stopped. But uh, yeah, we talked about Pumpkinhead. That one just comes up a lot. Um and what's so great about that movie is that the the title villain, Pumpkinhead, has so much personality. Yep. And he's nothing but a special effect. He's not even a suit. He's not an actor. He's he's all just raw puppetry. But you can tell that he has a personality. You can you can think the thoughts that are going through his head. He's so sadistic and so frightening. It's such a great movie and a great character. All right. Let me uh, tell you that uh, Shane's a big nerd. We all know that. <laughs> And uh, he wants to make sure that I tell everyone about Game Goblins and their special free RPG event going on for today only. Conveniently located, 1121 South Bowman, right on the corner of Bowman and Canis in West Little Rock. That's next to uh, Subway and Senior Tequila. Game Goblins is Central Arkansas's premier retailer of Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40K, Board games, card games, RPGs, miniatures, and hobby accessories. If that's not cool enough, today, June 16th, is their annual free RPG Day event. If you've been interested in checking out role-playing games, or if you're a long-time RPG lover, uh, you'll want to head over to Game Goblins today, pick up cool free swag like RPG adventure modules, dice, other accessories, and more. It's like a free comic book day but with role-playing games. They'll be hosting uh, games for a variety of RPG game systems, including D&D, Pathfinder, Shadowrun, and more throughout the day, as well as giving away prizes to participants. And here's my favorite part of it. It's all free. Uh, what are you waiting for? Get on over to Game Goblins right now for some free stuff and fun RPG games. First-time customers on any visit, you mention Shane Plays and receive $10 off your purchase of fifty dollars or more. Tell them that Shane Plays sent you. Comic book lovers, visit the wildstars.com today. From the mind of author and comic book industry expert Michael Tierney, it's not just a comic book, it's a comic book novel. The Wild Stars is sci-fi and so much more. Learn the explanations behind UFOs and space gods. This isn't the Twilight Zone. This is the region of the Milky Way galaxy known as the Wild Stars. We guarantee you've never read anything like it. The complete comic book novel took 20 years to tell, with one reviewer noting, the story of the Wild Stars stretches ambitiously across space and time, from small town murders to the destruction of planets, with every event given multiple layers of meaning. If you haven't read The Wild Stars, you're missing out. Visit thewildstars.com today. The Die is Cast. Plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure, where dragons lie, and the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines. Where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage. Monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory. All this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. Twelve years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game store or trollord.com to get your copy of castles and crusades today shame plays radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much however did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as one dollar an episode simply go to patreon.com slash shame plays 
Well, oh, we're back. Oh, we are. <laughs> you want you want to know what the headphones are called? Do they have a special terminology or something? Yeah, because for example, right now as I'm talking to you, I yes. can I can hear myself through the headphones. Right. I can monitor myself. Right. Your commercial headphones that you normally buy, they don't come with that feature, and so I know that. They probably call it something very different than what well, we're used to. Well, it's not the headphones. All right, it's not the headphones. It's they're doing it. It's the, it's the the mechanism that they're plugged into. Oh, okay. We're feeding the signal back into back it. into it. Okay. So um, talk to Russ, and he'll tell you how to do that. Okay, sounds good. And help you out yeah. with that. Yeah, no problem at all. All right, we we got. Do we do news at this sh- for his show? Okay, so we forget about the world. It's about ready to blow up. And, it, <laughs> and if it blows up while we're on the air, everybody would be a surprise. Is that is that the way it works? Okay, that's... Party at the pearly gates. That's cool. No problem with that at all. I don't. All right, I want to go back to this Indiegogo thing. Is it Indiegogo.com, one word? Yeah, Indiegogo.com. And so if you want to get a, 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 a feel for how it's going to be, uh, our buddy Ethan Vanskyver, we've talked about him on the yeah. show before. He's a friend of Gotta mine. Got to get him on. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm going to talk to him. I talk to him every now and again. So especially he's got this campaign. He's got a campaign running right now for his uh, long-anticipated Cyberfrog return. He oh, created this character this. Cyberfrog in, ni- in the 90s and it quit publishing it in 98 to work with Marvel and DC and kind of do the whole uh, mainstream comic book thing. Well, he's left DC Comics and he is going into Cyberfrog full bore. And he's got a great colorist named Kyle Ritter, uh, who's a, a, a hearing impaired gentleman uh, from Brazil. He's a phenomenal colorist. The work looks amazing. You can go Google, go to Indiegogo and search for Cyberfrog. And he, Ethan has, I believe, I didn't check this morning, but he crossed 200. He's two weeks into his uh, one month campaign. And these are kind of like in like Kickstarter. You run a month long campaign. He's over two hundred and ten thousand. Do you guys have a, an updated number? Two hundred ten thousand. Yeah. Two hundred and ten plus thousand dollars. So people are getting totally excited about uh, independently crowdfunded uh, comic books, and the public is uh, the comic book buying public is is coming back with enthusiasm and dollars, and they're showing their support for. Uh, Cyber Frog. I hope. I think they're going to show their support for Red Rooster. I think th- my hunch is, and my bet is, and like we didn't know this going in. I decided five or six months ago that I was going to do this Red Rooster thing regardless, even if I was going to have to write it myself. And I just happened into uh, a lucked in. Elizabeth discovered Mark for me and said, "Hey, you guys <laughs> would get along." And so Mark has really come in and helped save the day. I was going to do this anyway, but uh, what's happening at comic books is is incredible. Uh, it's it's almost like uh, it's almost like kind of like the '90s all over again. Uh, creators are stepping out because of you know the economics of some situations, the the odd social climate that that comics ha- have been in for the last uh, four years or so, especially the last two years. And uh, a few creators are stepping out and saying, "Hey, we can revitalize, and revolutionize uh, this business." And we can we believe the audience that walked away from comics will come back uh, if we give them something awesome and we go out on a limb and that what we're going to do is show show them something awesome and we're showing them something cool. We're going to make it happen. And it's uh, creators like Ethan that are doing this and, and myself and, uh, and and Tim and others. Chuck Dixon is another one who's uh, he's going to be doing. He has a, a campaign right now called uh, Ravage. Uh, with a new comic book company called Cautionary, and so they have an Indiegogo campaign. So go look for Ravage that by Chuck Dixon and um, and Cyberfrog by Ethan Van Skyver, and get just get an idea of what is going on out here in comic books. There's a uh, it's the culture war hit, war has hit us, but even beyond that, it's just like people want great comic books without propaganda in them, you know, with deep metaphors and rich characters and good versus evil and that's where it's at and well, people you, people are showing up for us and if you want to know what's going on at least with the indiegogo area of comics with these creators you need to follow these creators on twitter and on social media because if you use the the mainstream comic book news sites they aren't going to re- be reporting on no, any of this they're not they're, covering any they're of they're going to stay mute so you're not going to find out about this stuff on on those sites and you probably know which ones i'm talking about so look up um, Ethan Van Skyver and look up uh, Mitch Breitweiser and Chuck Dixon and all of them. I got on Twitter. I got Indiegogo for uh, yeah. them right now. The Cyber yep. Frog. 
Uh, it says the return of cyber frog awakened into a world seized by a swarm of murderous alien hornets. I love it. <laughs> you love that. I do. $222,000. $222,000. Two weeks to and go. Four yeah, I dollars for 14 days contain, uh, as it can keep yeah. on going. Well, two more weeks. Uh, he's only been up for two weeks and he's got two weeks to go. I think this is astounding. Go, go back and tell their friends. My name is Ethan Van Skyver. I'm a comic book. Yeah. Well, he talks fast. <laughs> yes, he well, you got to talk fast. The uh, other thing too is like, um, fa- like Mark has just mentioned, f- the fake news has also hit uh, the media regarding comics. And one thing that astounded me was last week they reported on an LGBTQ RZ XYZ campaign comic, <laughs> and and they were they were gloating because it raised twenty thousand. Oh, well, like that's a lot of money. And they, and they they completely ignored Jawbreakers, which has raised over three hundred and forty thousand. Wow. And now they're ignoring Cyberfrog, which has raised two hundred twenty thousand. Completely ignoring it, and they're gloating about this book that made twenty uh, k. And it's only because the politics are aligned with what sure. they want. So the fake news exists in that realm too. That's pretty cool. Almost uh, two hundred twenty-two thousand and four. Dollars. That four dollars is important too. You know, I tell you why. The if if the audience shows up uh, for these books, yeah, and we raise a ton of money, um, the Red Rooster campaign, Chuck's campaign, and Ethan's campaign, the sky is really the limit for what we can accomplish. We can take these numbers. Uh, this is a this is the base. This is the base of what could be accomplished. Mm-hmm. This is just on Indiegogo. This isn't without any retail partnerships, without comic book stores. Uh, this is uncharted territory uh, for comic books, and we could, with with numbers like this, with a base of support like this, we can go to powerhouse retail outlets and say, "Hey, look what's happening! There's something exciting here. We can go. We can. These things could be toys and movies and cartoon shows and video games. Uh, it is far beyond just really comic books. It's about uh, your children. It's about getting great products to your kids and giving them." Uh, heroic narratives that they can use to pattern uh their young adult lives and adult lives with uh, this is uh, this is a, a in many ways could be a cultural revolution uh, with entirely new products exciting new stories exciting new characters and uh creators that are willing to step out and do heroic things themselves all right so word is out now tim incredibles 2 mm-hmm. opening weekend 180 plus million dollars Wow. Well, we'll have to check it out then. you got to go see it, yeah. By the way... You promised me it's not SJW. No. (laughs) I won't say that there's not a little in it, but it could be taken (laughs) as being, but I don't think that that Brad Bird meant it that way. That's my my feeling of it. I think it's that the trailer for Incredibles 2 came out with the the same time as the trailer for Wreck-It Ralph 2 and Lego Movie 2, and all three of those trailers had the same theme in them about, you know, girl power and and how, you know, men doing pratfalls and being useless and stupid, and all just kind of felt uh, a little obnoxious all at once. Well, Mr. Incredible proves that a man can take care of his kids, and that can be a manly thing. And that's that's something that's... that's something that men need to hear because when you watch situational comics or uh, you know comedies on television, uh, the father's always just a, An oaf. a DA. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean that's just the way it, that it plays out. Uh, Brad Bird shows that's not the case. That every member of the family is important to the family, mm. and sticking together is how the family survives. That's pr- pretty good. That's basically the part of this movie I got and. Stay for the very end, again, for the music, but Bird has a thank you, and I think it vilifies what I just said about the family. Okay. Yeah, I think you'll like it. By the way, and this goes to what Mitch was saying just a moment ago, uh, $222,004, all right? If you take how many people have given money to this Indiegogo, it averages out maybe to about $60 a person. Yeah. That, you know, that... It's huge. Yeah, it's big. And then it's a kind of a boutique thing. So what you're doing is getting the first printing. They're going to be extra special, like chromium covers. He's doing chromium covers. I'll probably add gold covers for okay, my now what, age what is book. a chromium cover? Yeah, so like in the 90s, they had all these sort of foil, like stamped and embossed type covers. Okay. And they were kind of gimmicky back in the day. But I think now that we're doing kind of higher quality books on nice paper and therefore it's it's – 
a boutique audience in many ways. So you'll get like with Red Rooster, we're going to offer, I want to offer like there's a, in the book itself, I want to offer these sort of meta experiences. So in the book, there's like a Red Rooster society. He's a famous, he's a famous vigilante folk hero before it all falls, falls apart for him. So he's inspiring kids in the book and they're part of like, you know, Cracker Jack secret society, like the okay. Red Rooster society. And so what I want to do is offer, uh, like pins like if you sign up you'll get a, a signed comic book signed by the entire creative team uh ship directly to your house and it'll include like a rooster you'll be a founding member of the red rooster you know order of the dawn society or, or whatever and we want to offer these sort of special things so in the you're talking about that uh bombshell uh picture i drew which is actually related to this whole campaign and you can see that on my facebook it's or twitter cool. or whatever i'm gonna get that inked up and elizabeth's gonna color it it's a campaign ad for a cola brand that's within the Red Rooster universe called Kapow Cola. And I came up with this idea since this, since the Red Rooster's famous, what, what would he have but sponsorships, right? He would be yeah. a spokesman. So he is the spokesman for this Kapow Cola brand. And in many ways, that's not an idealized version of a hero, right? You want the hero to be sort of self-sacrificing in, in all ways. But, in you know, he's flawed. He's flawed. So... He represents. He and his allies are the spokespeople for this famous cola brand. And and so what I, I but actually, he wants to eat. So he you know he's got to gotta make he's some a, money yeah, somewhere. He's, he's a capitalist at, at heart, right? Uh, but that you know, uh, we'll see where it goes in the story. Okay. <laughs> well, so we'll see where it goes. But I'm creating fake you know cola ads and everything with uh, with him and, and these characters in it, and it's going to be part of the story. So I'm, I'm actually maybe even I might even offer a Kapow cola, an actual Kapow cola as. Uh, another incentive so you can have this sort of meta experience you can have your uh, red rooster society pin read the comic book and enjoy a, a cold kapow cola while you read your book and everything okay so. i'm going to tell you what okay now if you're going to use the durango boys for that mm -hmm. you get that you have that the woman riding the bomb on the front mm -hmm. as part of the label i'll order the first case wow a whole case i was yeah. just gonna do like one per box right no. for the first 1500 people but i guess if we want to sell cases yeah well you sure, should why not although they mix up all their own cola don't they they do yeah their root beers is phenomenal yeah but i'm i'm gonna order the sampler you should you you talked me into it and yeah. so i, I want to try that vanilla that they've got it was good yeah no the vanilla and i'm the a big vanilla guy was good and uh, just don't key order the lime. don't order the chocolate soda no <laughs> oh, we got that. one of those <laughs> i want that no. that sounds amazing you, that's, but oh, you gotta have yeah. a tro that's gotta be a chocolate soldier or something like that i mean something that's been around for a while you know <laughs> that you know when you pop it open you what the taste is that you're gonna get because you can really screw up yeah, chocolate a, flavored stuff. Yeah, there's a chocolate soda in the 90s that I used to drink, and I drank it because it, it tasted like a Tootsie Roll. Chocola? <laughs> ah, that might have been it. Yeah. That sounds amazing. It's yeah. just good. Well, it's good. It, you can still find it. Go okay. to any, any of the, you know, uh, gas stations that sells more stuff to you inside the store than the gas outside the Buckies. store. Buckies. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. Yeah, the, the Beaver Place. The Beaver yeah. Place, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can go there, and you can find Chocola. It, it's, it's right there, and, and chocolate's... Chocolate sh soldiers are a little harder to find. Okay. What was good about them is at the bottom, you had to shake them before you opened them. And the chocolate was a, well, about half an inch thick at the bottom, and you shook <laughs> it up in there. It mm -hmm. was really good. It was excellent. Hey, uh, you want to call Tierney for us? Let's get him on the line. And uh, got a special deal going uh, on Kickstarter. And, uh, you know, Timothy Lim is working with Michael Tierney here in uh, North Little Rock. He's in North Little Rock, right? He's in Little Rock. Oh, and Little, Little Rock. Rock. And Little. Yeah. Okay. He gets I, around. I, the last time that he was on my show uh, was when they were trying to change the road there on JFK, trying to screw it up. And <laughs> he and I talked about that on the air. But uh, if you want comics, it's the place to go. Absolutely. He's, he's got everything. Now, you're going to do some work on a new book that he's got coming out. I already did the work. So oh, you already did it. It's the cover of his main book. So it, it, The Check Didn't Bounce. No, to check the okay, not bounce. I'm just, check, <laughs> just checking. Okay, but uh, okay. What what's what's the title of the book, or should I, we wait till he gets on? I think we'll wait for him to go on. But it's his Wild Stars line, um, which is this, I think what he talked about with you before. Uh, are you, hey Mike? Yeah. How you doing, it's Dave Ellswick? Doing great. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Tell us about this new book. 
Well, the Wallace Stars is something I've been working on since the early 70s, um, where basically mankind, 75,000 years ago, uh, already migrated into space once and colonized planets circling the brightest stars in the night sky. Those are the Wallace Stars. And, well, you know, so every story of UFOs and space gods, that's just been because it's coming back for a visit. Uh, so, you know, the uh, original Volume 1 started out in present time, Volume 2 moved into the future, and the Volume 3 that uh, Tim uh, did a cover for me is uh, set in the uh, future as well. All right. And is it out now? Do you have copies of it ready to be sold and people to pay to buy? Well, it's on, available on a Kickstarter. Uh, okay. I think you guys were talking about uh, an Indigo site. Well, this is Kickstarter, the one who really kind of started that whole thing about crowdfunding. And uh, the main cover is you know, by Tim. And uh, so uh, right now we're about... Uh, 300% or a little over 300% of what our original funding goal was. So it's doing pretty good. And um, so people, if they uh, go ahead and pledge on there on Kickstarter, just uh, type in Wild Stars and you should find it easily. Uh, I'm also tossing in a whole bunch of uh, free bonuses, too. Uh, oh, free bonuses. What are the free bonuses? You're using my favorite word that starts with <laughs> F and is only four letters long. <laughs> it really works in everybody's budget, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Back in uh, 2001 and 2002, I did a, a seven-issue Wild Stars comic series. And uh, so uh, the uh, issues one through six were all two ninety five each, and the issue seven was um, a 595 64-pager. Matter of fact, I found a guy on Amazon just this week who's asking $608.28 for a copy. I don't know what the wow. 28 cents is for, but he did offer free shipping. And um, <laughs> so you can save uh, you know, uh, almost $600 by directly from me, and you get uh, the whole rest of the series for free, too. That sounds and, really and good. And three on top of that. All right, so how was it working with uh, Tim Lim? Did, was he, did he follow instructions well? Oh, yeah, Tim was great. I told him, I said, give me a, you know, kind of an action cover. Uh, it's kind of like the men's magazines from the 50s and 60s, you know, and uh, that's exactly what he did. And one reviewer liked it so much, he called it a manly hunk of manliness. Wild Stars 3 will put hair on your chest. Very good. All right, well, congratulations and good luck with it. And uh, keep us up to date on it, okay? Great. Well, thank you for calling. It was good talking to you. All again. right, we'll talk to you later. All right, so Michael Tierney, and he's got a new book out. Uh, go to Kickstarter, check it out. Yeah. Sounds like something that you might want to get involved in. And or go to one of his two comic book stores and ask him more about it. Ask him face-to-face. There you go. But as you can tell, he talks really fast, so keep your hand over your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. All right. So uh, did you hear my uh, talk yesterday about John Travolta's new movie? No, I did Tell not. Uh-uh. Gotti. Really? They about John Gotti? Yeah. Oh, wow. He plays John Gotti. And, and whenever you get involved in a movie, from what I understand, with uh, John uh, Travolta, if he's got anything to say about it, it will end up kind of like Battlefield Earth. Oh, no, it's a Scientology <laughs> Really, thing. really bad. No, it's just oh, really, it's just really bad. I mean, <laughs> how can you take Barry Pepper and Forrest Whitaker and destroy their, almost destroy their careers with that movie? <laughs> oh, That's a man. terrible, terrible Staying Alive was bad, okay? That movie was the worst, but now he has outdone himself with Gotti. On uh, Rotten Tomatoes, you ready for He had a zero. Whoa. Holy cow. A zero. Wow. Oh, jeez. Uh, it was. They say it's just terrible. Maybe what it's one of those a- ones that's so bad it's good kind of thing. <laughs> like- I don't know. I just know that. It, you gotta you gotta work hard to get a zero. <laughs> when are they gonna do a Welcome Back Cotter movie? Get him. Oh, that that, <laughs> that would be fun. That'd be that because could play Cotter. You know, Turn now he could yeah. absolutely could play Cotter. Uh, the big thing for John Travolta, if he's smart, is that he will just bide his time because next year is the fiftieth anniversary of Greece. <laughs> oh mm-hmm. yeah, just, and just, geez, just hold re- your horses on that. Next one, year, yeah. just re-release it with the famous kiss. At the end, because originally they filmed Sandy and Danny kissing at the end of Greece. Somehow mm-hmm. it got cut out of the original movie. Now they found the film and they're going to restore it for the the release of the uh, Blu-ray next year. Wow, I didn't know that. So we'll see. I'm sure they'll release the movie again and put it back in theaters. It's it it, it is the greatest selling ticket wise of musicals with saturday night fever right close on its heels but people love greece yeah greece it's kind of hard to watch though when you know that that fan theory about the ending you know that that makes it a 
turns the whole movie into a tragedy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just watch. I watch it, and there's just there's certain you know set numbers that they do that I really liked. Mm. I just think it's funny that people don't really listen closely to the words of Grease Lightning. <laughs> Have you ever listened closely to the words of Grease Lightning? No. Listen to it closely. Well, we got. Do we have a <laughs> we have a break coming up? Okay, we need to take a break. Well, during the break, Tom, I'll tell you about a line in Grease Lightning <laughs> that most parents have no idea that their children, if they're are paying attention, will be singing. Okay, uh, I'll tell you that. I can't say it on the air. You can see it in the movie, but I can't say it on my radio show. Uh, that, well, it's not mine. I maybe I can because it's Shane's show <laughs> so i can say it on shane like and then everybody can say did you hear on shane plays radio today what was said no i won't do that let's take a break we'll be back with more oh we're gone we're back on we're back on so you work at which university well my uh i guess now i have to say that nothing i say here is um reflected by the university yes let me, okay <laughs> Whatever whatever he says is his opinion his opinion alone and not necessarily that is it UAMS? Uh, UALR. Oh, UALR. <laughs> I do this for Rob uh, for for Robert uh, Steinbach all oh, the time. Oh, yeah, he is on all the time. And, you know, it's n- not this school. This school may not have his exact opinions, probably not, because it'll be kind of conservative <laughs> oh, and libertarian. We don't, we don't know UALR's opinions on pumpkin heads. No, <laughs> we don't. Yeah. Yeah. We don't. It should be. We know what it should be, but w- if it would be, not that. Okay, so we got that out. Disclaimer's mm-hmm. done. Because I do it for Tim as well. So what, uh, you know, what are we, uh, what are we talking about here? No, oh, you're talking. Yet you come, you work over at the university. Oh yeah. So if um if you want to have me on on Friday, I can uh, see if I can get the the time to to come on. Yeah, try I, to get time. Try, yeah. You know, see if they'll. I mean, it's a government job. Surely they'll just give you some. Time <laughs> I got so on. many banked hours, I could use them. <laughs> I mean, look at Tim. <laughs> you know, he comes over here all the time. All right, we've got about eight minutes left. And I want uh, Mitch Breitweiser to come back and talk about this Indiegogo.com uh, that they're getting ready to kick off in, in July. Uh, you can get the uh, – we're putting this up on Facebook Live. It'll be on, is it under, going to be on the Shane Plays Radio? Is that how they'll find it? Uh, it's going to be on my page. Okay. So take this and uh, and share it with everybody you know. Yeah. Yeah, and, really, and tell them, pay attention to what Mitch Bartweiser says. Yeah, uh, well, please do. Because yeah, otherwise, now, they'll not you can pay ignore me. Attention. You could ignore me <laughs> in the fall, I guess. <laughs> but for the summer, yeah, I would really love your attention. Uh, we want to make something really special for it's the summer your audience. Of Mitch. Yeah, it is the summer of Mitch. That sounds like a horror movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you come to camp and uh, you mark. You have to write that. Uh, uh, and make you a, yeah. a little doll that looks kind of like you with a knife. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. I'm going to wake up with like pains in my side and oh, no. be like, oh my gosh, what is Dave up to? It'll have the same yeah. ending as Sleepaway Camp. There you go. <laughs> okay. Good stuff. Go ahead, Mitch. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah. Come out and, and support us this summer. I'm going to be, uh, you know, bugging Shane's audience some more and your audience while the campaign is running. I'm going to bring Elizabeth on and, uh, you know, she's really shy. So a, a radio appearance for her is a big deal. So we're going to come on and talk more about Last it and make time sure everybody's informed. She was on this show was probably almost a year ago probably more than that yeah Yeah, she's coming she's coming she's going to come back in the near future i'm looking forward to it she is so smart Mm -hmm. how did you ever end up with her i don't know i guess i was patient and kind and and you married above yourself yeah and uh i had the i don't know I, I was cut, i had just got my job with marvel see what she doesn't know like she i i I just timed it right. The right? truth is coming out so, now. Yeah, she she she's five years younger. Let me I'll tell you how it happened real real fast. So there she's five is. years younger than me. She was a senior at Harding, for which I was an alumni. Uh-huh. I was living in New York at the time, uh, and I had just I had spent five years after college trying to get into this comic book business, and finally did it. And I just signed an exclusive contract with Marvel. So I was riding high for like the first time in my life. I was riding high. I did had, you go out and buy a new car? I did. I bought a Mustang. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it always happens. Uh, I was living way. in New York, and I met her. Uh, I met her online over MySpace before it was defunct. When it was like really big, and uh, dating so yourself, we man. we talked. Uh, yeah, I am dating myself. <laughs> uh, so uh, we talked for months while I was living with a buddy of mine in Connecticut, and I bought a car. I didn't have a car, at the time, yeah. so I bought a car for the like. Yeah, and and can't. can't came back to Arkansas, we started dating. 
And so, yeah, I think I just hit the timing. I just timed it right. I was riding high, and uh, I, I had just achieved this uh, dream of mine, and I thought, like, anything was possible, so I'll just go for the most beautiful, coolest girl I can find. And uh, and she was the most beautiful, coolest girl in the world. There's and no so, doubt about that. And, and uh, so I uh, said, I better lock this down <laughs> pretty fast. <laughs> Uh, and I'm glad I did, and I'm glad she stuck with me through thick and thin ever since. Well, yeah. Yeah. here's get coolest, all right, coolest girl out there, and you know, brilliant and talented. Yeah. Well, yeah, she's got the whole ball of wax. Yeah, she has. Buddy. She comes from a great family, and and uh, they're all her brothers are very talented, and uh, so yeah, good good child rearing. As goes much a long way. as we love Mitch and Elizabeth. They do not hold a candle to their cat, <laughs> the greatest <laughs> yes. cat in the world. That is your true blessing right there. You truly need to, to start a independent, you know, Instagram account. Just we do. For, we oh, do. Is for one. That. Is it's, really? His I name didn't is Chumley Bear. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, he's, he's uh, you can, you can follow it. Elizabeth well, and me on Instagram. And here's the weirdest time. thing. So I first met their cat about two months ago. I had actually been following their cat for more than a year. I didn't realize it was their cat. Yeah, yeah, he's famous. He he's is been a on famous Fox cat. News and yeah. like all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah. yeah. When she, Tim first met Chumley, he um he immediately sent me a you know a video of Chumley. <laughs> and he's like, Mark, watch this video, and I see that's that this. Thing. ugly cute cat come walking out and i just started laughing like what the heck is that and um he, he said oh it's my friend's cat i didn't know he meant mitch so when i went uh, first over to mitch's place to, uh, to plot red rooster Uh-oh. um the famous cat come walking out <laughs> oh my god <laughs> is any- mark was starstruck it was hilarious is there any bloodline you know Relation uh, to Morris? Morris. I, I don't remember know who, Morris the Cat? No, I don't. Used to do the Nine Lives commercials all the time. <laughs> yeah, there may be. I don't know. Uh, his father was a big sh- was a show cat. And, uh, yeah, we got him from this lady in Jacksonville who who's no longer here anymore. But she bred these. Uh, it called, they're called exotics, which is a cross between a British blue hare and a Persian cat. But they're short-haired, and they're real kind of thick and boxy. Mm-hmm. So they – with these – bulldog like heads and so they're just really <laughs> cute and they're really mild tempered cats and uh, that's why we wanted a really mild tempered uh, sweet cat and he has a sweet he's a he's a he is a teddy he bear he looks like he's stoned all the time <laughs> oh, he just I'm just saying like that's what too. he looks like yeah he does kind of he's kind of like got these half eyes and yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's funny and he's real chill all the time that's interesting. Elizabeth uh, just wrote me and says, "Tell Dave he's my favorite." I don't, oh, favorite what? I don't know what yeah, that means. That's kind of scary, but <laughs> yeah, well, look, we're going to have her on in the near future because she really is a, a huge talent mm-hmm. in the industry now. That's, yeah, it's cool. How's it feel to be passed up by your spouse? <laughs> 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 I love to do that. Yeah, it's great. But I mean, it's really cool. You bought a Mustang. I did. Was you? Would you? What first check? Uh, no, I bought a. I bought an iMac with my first check. Okay, that was, that was what I bought with my first check, and then I saved up about three more checks, and I put a down payment on a car. Cool for you. I mean, I can remember getting my first big gig in talk radio mm-hmm. and doing the exact same thing. Yeah, buying a car and. Signing the contract was, I'll never forget it. I bet you, you'll never oh, forget it. Oh, no, that. I remember uh, Frank was the guy I bought the car from. And uh, yeah, he, he was a typical car salesman guy. Uh, yeah, And, and, and uh, we named uh, Frank, we, uh, our Red Rooster guy is named Frank. And so f- he's named after the guy I bought the car from. All Frank, right. Frank Cooper. Listen up. Indiegogo.com. What do they look under Indiegogo.com for? Red Rooster? Uh, yes. You'll search Indiegogo. Uh, basically, just follow me on Twitter, right? Okay. If, and, and that, or Facebook or something like that right now. And then I'll, I'll be notifying everybody in about a month or so when the thing goes live. All right. Mitch, Tim, thanks for coming. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Mark, we'll Thank see you. you again on Great Friday. Time. Cool. We're going to talk horror movies for sure on this coming Friday, so oh, bone up, brother. We're going to get to see <laughs> Hereditary right. before then. All oh, right. man, I got to Yeah, that. you got to go see that. I th- it's like Rosemary's Baby. So just Is keep it more exciting going. than Rosemary's Baby? Not <laughs> really. Oh. <laughs> All right. Gotta get, I got to get out of here. News is coming up. Playing with yarn is stupid, but cat owners expect it. <laughs> Part of the image. How about some din They also expect you to be finicky. Watch me be finicky. Some nine lives, dear? Uh Uh-oh. 
chicken, liver, tuna. Tuna? Wow. Mm. Rich red tuna meat. <laughs> mm. Nine lives, the nutritious foods cats really like, even Morris. Dear diary, today I was not finicky. <laughs> Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual? For as little as $1 an episode, simply go to patreon.com slash Shane Plays.